our weekly series where we check in with each of the borough presidents. This morning we are talking with Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson about getting out the vote for tomorrow's election day and the borough president joining us now. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here, Ms. Gibson. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So let's talk about these numbers. The Board of Elections put them out, right? The Bronx, 39,000 people cast their ballots so far compared to over 100,000 in, say, Manhattan, Queens. So low voter turnout so far. What is your message to Bronxites really about getting out and voting tomorrow in particular? What do you stand to lose if they don't? My message to fellow Bronxites is there's too much at stake. Uh, there are so many challenges that we face in the borough, and we need to make sure that we elect the right leaders who align with our values and our priorities. We need to make sure we support the Democratic ticket all the way from governor to lieutenant governor, controller, as well as attorney general, as well as our state legislators and judges. We need to make sure we get out the vote because our fundamental rights are on the line, our reproductive rights, health care, worker rights, supporting LGBTQIA plus communities, disability rights, everything is on the line. So I'm urging all of my Bronxites who have not yet voted during the nine days of early voting to please make sure you come out on Tuesday, November 8th and make a plan to vote and vote for your future, vote for our children, vote for our borough, our city, and our state. Yeah, voting so important right now. Well, yesterday, I want to change gears here a little bit, uh, marked one week since that deadly fire in Castle Hill that killed four members of one family. So tragic. And investigators say it was a faulty power strip that mm -hmm. was to blame for that fire. Have you had a chance to, to speak with the family? And what's the city doing to help them? Absolutely. Last Sunday when this happened, I got an early morning call about a fire on Quimby Avenue in Castle Hill, and we went to the scene, and obviously it was really, really heartbreaking to know that a mother lost her 22-year-old son, her two young sons, and mm. her granddaughter. An entire family uh, essentially wiped out in one fire. The Castle Hill community, the Yemeni American community, the Muslim community, very tight knit, very united. We've been in contact with the family all week. Uh, Sunday evening, we had a vigil. We gathered together uh, on the one week recognition to celebrate life and to recognize that this is a family in need. And we know we have to do more. We're working with uh, Commissioner Laura Cavanaugh and the FDNY Education and Outreach. We have to do more. We have to do a lot of outreach and education. We have to go into immigrant communities. We have to be very culturally sensitive and language diverse. And we have to talk to residents about evacuation procedures, right. how you get out. But we know that electrical fires do happen and sometimes we can avoid them. But in this particular case, it looked like it was a faulty electrical mm -hmm. outlet that caused this fire in our borough. All right, let's talk about crime right now because it's really leading the conversation heading into the elections. Violent attacks and crimes on subways in particular mm -hmm. prompted the city, like as you know, to add more police to the system. Just yesterday, there was a stabbing on the Morris Avenue Soundview uh, station. So is the Bronx, would you say, getting its fair share of those transit cops that we're hearing are, are being deployed to ride the trains, patrol the subways, or do you think there needs to be more? We need more. I am constantly uh, talking to Chief Jason Walcox, the chief of transit, as well as our patrol borough Bronx. I work closely with the CEOs at TD 11 and 12 that represent all of our subways in the Bronx. And we know that we need to do more. We've seen executive officers now riding the subway, on the subway platforms, in the subways, visibility, the deployment of more transit cops, MTA police. And we know that when you look at the entire borough, most of our high volume subways will get those transit officers, the hub, Park Chester, Castle mm. Hill, uh, parts of Fordham Road. But there are other train stations along the B, D, and 4 line that also need equal attention. We've seen too many unprovoked attacks by individuals that have severe mental illness. Yeah. They've been arrested, they're unsheltered, they're homeless. We cannot wait for them to commit a crime in order for them to be institutionalized. And we know that incarceration is not always the answer. Many individuals need serious mental health. They need stable housing. Incarceration does not solve our crimes. It doesn't solve all of the answers. We need tangible, real, innovative solutions. We need social workers to be riding trains with our police officers because it's not just up to NYPD. Mm -hmm. We all have a responsibility. And anytime we have an unprovoked attack and assault on a subway, our riders do not feel safe. And until we get a handle on this crime, we have a lot of work to do in the mm -hmm. Bronx and the city of New York. Uh, just before we let you go, I know that you something you had spoken about, we're, we've run out of time, but quickly, just, you know, we talk about housing. Do you think that there's yes. enough being done to provide that affordable housing? And you don't want to turn into a, another uh, area that we've seen happen in, Bro in Brooklyn. 
We need affordable housing all over the Bronx. We need all neighborhoods to do their fair share. We need to recognize that homelessness is a New York City crisis and not a Bronx crisis. And many people are struggling to meet rent. They are rent burdened. More than 30% of their income is towards rent. We need to make sure that we protect tenants. We support homeowners. And yeah. we also support small landlords that need support as well. Building affordable housing is about stability. It's about creating good paying jobs. When you look at all the construction in the Bronx, we need good paying jobs that create a pathway yes. to the middle class. So we are supporting efforts to uh, support housing for seniors, for veterans, for foster youth, for LGBT youth, for our homeless families, for children and families. We need to make sure that we protect okay. all of our residents so we have stability. In housing. I don't have to leave it there. Important message. But good to talk to you, Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson. Thank you for joining us this morning as we continue our conversations with the borough presidents. Good to chat with you. Thank you so much. Shout out to the Bronx. There you go. Thank